in my view, we have a coincidence of factors that presents perhaps an opportunity that will only come in a lifetime to advance the cause of nuclear disarmament and the control of the proliferation of nuclear weapons across the world. But we have this opportunity which has been injected with a substantial degree of urgency by Barack Obama's April speech in Prague, in which he, as the Americans say, envisioned, um, or as we would say envisaged, um, described a world free of nuclear weapons, which I think is a world that most sane people would want to live in. In this current phase of leadership, it goes back to prominent American politicians coming together from their own experience and saying the time is right now to deal with this. This is a significant danger to the world. And then we have our own foreign, former Foreign Secretary, Margaret Beckett, who made a very important speech at the Carnegie Institute. I myself, as the Secretary of State for Defence, went to the conference on disarmament, the first ever defence minister to speak there. And we have tried through that process to engender a degree of interest uh, among our allies and others to begin to describe how we can do all the technical challenges that, that, um, that this process will pose. I went to the uh, conference on disarmament to say there are specific things that we can do to increase confidence in this process. I mean, for example, we said that we would convene for the first time ever here in London a P5 conference which would look at injecting confidence back into the process by discussing issues of transparency, issues to do with how do you verify um, disarmament. And we entered into a partnership with the Norwegians as a non, as very specifically a non-nuclear weapon state and us as a nuclear weapon state to try to work through how you can deal with the issue of verification across that divide without offending the provisions of the treaty. So, I mean, the last thing we want to do is hand over to non-nuclear weapon states information which is in breach of the treaty and we, we engaged in that process. Now, I'm no longer the Secretary of State for Defence, but in September of this year we had that conference. We had it here in London. Um, it, I think, probably was conducted in slightly too much secrecy, but I can understand why the countries who were involved wanted to maintain the confidence of their discussions. But all of the reporting that I've heard of that confidence w conference was that it was, that it was a great success. I mean, my, those whom I speak to in America when I visit America tell me that it was conducted in a very forthright, business-like and, 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 and appropriate fashion and that they made a lot of progress. Um, and we've given leadership in other areas of, um, of um, arms control, such as uh, you know, other weapon systems which we've given up or we've, we've we contributed to the control of, including the arms trade treaty we gave leadership, all intended to imbue a degree of confidence in our commitment to this uh, this dynamic, this progression towards a safer world, a world with less uh, armaments in it. Now, I mean, I am confident now from my experience in the top level group and my engagement in the parliamentary system with people who speak for other parties that this, there's a bilateral approach to this now. You know, we're in the, I think, very pleasant position, if I may say so, of having both parties that would aspire to govern this country, in fact, all three parties, if you include the Liberal Democrats, broadly in the same place. The differences between us are nuanced differences, but we are all driving towards um, the same end, which is a world free of nuclear weapons. And we have a prime minister now who, speaking for all of us, has said that once we get through the barrier that the present demand for a follow-on to start um, generates to this uh, process, and we will get through that, I'm confident the Americans and the Russians will um, get through that, at some stage, there will be discussions in the world, led probably by the Americans, which will engage all of us, all of those who have nuclear weapons, and we will be willing to put our weapon systems into those discussions, and that's where we should be. Now, of course, there are people who say that we should give these weapons up unilaterally. Now, there are lots of reasons, in my view, why we shouldn't do that. But the principal reason why we shouldn't do that, from my perspective at the moment, is that we provide a degree of analysis and experience which gives confidence to other nuclear weapon states that you can maintain your security and reduce your number of weapons. And as long as we are there and in that environment as a nuclear weapon state, we can provide that element. It doesn't solve the problem of how we get from just reduction through small numbers to zero, which present all sorts of real difficult and technical arguments. It doesn't solve the problem of how we get through 
um, the imbalance in conventional weaponry that there is in the world and the fears that that generates in some countries, particularly the fact that the Americans, you know, their, their ability conventionally outstrips the aggregate ability of the rest of the world and that does generate a degree of apprehension. All of these are issues that we need to deal with in the context of these negotiations. But, you know, we have to start from where we are and it is encouraging in my view that we are able to start with the support of a President of the United States who has consistently and repeatedly committed himself to the long-term objective. I mean, my own view as a politician, I mean, I'm not a scientist, you know, I mean, nor am I a moral leader right, of the country, but I am a politician, and my own view from experience in government at the highest level is that unless the politicians take ownership of this agenda, as the President of the United States has and others, then we will not see the progress that we need, and time is running out. So there are significant problems, but they are all able to be overcome if from the most powerful politician in the world down, the leadership of the world says we want these to be overcome, and they will only do that if they engage in discussions to agree to operationalise this ambition to have a world free of nuclear weapons.